Right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah going back to get more specific, I'm I'm excited. Uh, calorie surplus starts in about two weeks from now. So right now I'm yeah. just like, maintaining like 190, 192. I fluctuate around there. So uh, okay, bulking back up to about 215 over the next maybe one and a half to two years. I'm gonna try to take it slow this time, not get too fat. Um, right. Myself. How many up. calories? Yeah. How many calories is maintenance for you right now? Around three thousand. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm about 5'11 with the cardio I'm doing, and uh, I'm in the gym probably four days a week. Yeah. So, yeah, it keeps my metabolism pretty high. Yeah, man, it's, it's awesome. You, you track your macros and all that? Uh, not anymore. I did for a while, mm -hmm. and uh, now I kind of just eyeball it. If I was trying to go, like, in a deeper cut, I definitely would because it's a lot more helpful, but mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of just – know myself now um so i don't really have to but i do still okay. weigh stuff just to kind of track how much i'm actually taking in but i'm not sitting there counting my macros anymore uh, okay you know i've never done the food scale thing i just kind of use um what is it called chronometer that app it's kind of like my fitness pal but you can actually check uh, micronutrients as well and okay. i maybe track my macros like once every other month for a week just to mm -hmm. kind of get a baseline of where I'm at and make sure like it kind of helps me eyeball for the preceding weeks. Right. Like, that way I kind of know where I'm at. I just eat similar things every day and, you know, titrate the portions of each meal up or down and it's like 200, 300 calorie increments to either gain or lose weight at the rate that I want. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just kind of make sure to hit like, you know, at least 150 grams of protein every day. Mm -hmm. And then from there, like, you know, if I want to gain or lose weight, I'm kind of manipulate carbs. You know, I probably take in, you know, at least 100, 120 grams of fat. And I, I try to keep it the, the healthy fats and all that. Uh, yeah, that's that's a little, uh, most people like they're taking in like between 50 and 80, I've noticed. So they're people are trying to make room for more carbs. Uh, yeah. you, have, you feel better on a higher fat diet? Not real high fat, but I do like... Uh, I like my uh, like almond butter and avocados oh, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Uh, stuff like that. You know, not like high saturated fat, but mm -hmm. uh, keep that that pretty limited. Yeah, um, gotten away from that. I used to drink a lot of whole milk, so yeah, not good anymore. Like I've realized, like my saturated fat intake was off the charts <laughs> with how much I was drinking. Yeah, I can't. I can't do it anymore. I'm, you know, since I've gotten a little bit older, like my blood work gets uh really affected by you know saturated fat it seems um so yeah i try to limit that as much you know after i just ate pizza earlier you know, that's probably my first like cheat meal there since vacation but um okay yeah i mean that was a while ago what like two weeks so you burned yeah. it you know? yeah i was due i was due <laughs> and i kind of saved it for this weekend it was my son's birthday this weekend so oh sweet man where'd you get the pizza from uh like you live out on the east coast right yeah, I, I just got Papa John's. If it was up to me, honestly, I would have gone up to Costco and got the uh, got their pizza. I, I really like Costco's pizza for some reason. I get tired of all the all the chains. I've never been to Costco, but I've heard good things about the pizza. Yeah. Ten dollar like massive pizza, and their I think it's their cheese is like so good. I think that's probably what what does it for me. I think it says we're running out of time. Oh, we got ten minutes left. Okay, so. Right. Well, flew by. I didn't realize there was a time limit. I guess we got to upgrade the Zoom for the next one. Yeah, I think uh, that happened to me when I was on the chat with uh, Baby Giant Barbell. They cut us off and we had to reconnect. But... Yeah, I've been following him for a while, but honestly, like, I haven't been keeping up on the YouTube much. I've been on Instagram a lot lately, and I yeah. got to get back on YouTube, see what he's up to. He's a cool dude. Yeah, he's on, well, he's on Instagram too. But yeah, same for me. Uh, you know, I've been more active on, on Instagram lately. Uh, Got to get back. Like, YouTube seems to be kind of slow during the summer. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you noticed that. But plus just, like, the long-form content is, like, a little more editing. You know, yeah. Like yeah. Instagram, I can just throw my workouts up there. Yeah. Type some of the stuff and, you know, keep it moving. But I'd like to do some more reviews and some of the home gym equipment and stuff uh, yeah i feel like the youtube content's more like internally satisfying but it, you know it takes more time and effort for sure yeah yeah absolutely 
Uh, man, I barely even got onto this list. I think I tackled like one thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what else did you want to talk about? I wanted to ask you about like how you approach deloading. Like I know you had your vacation. Did you train on vacation or do you just take that week off and uh, yeah. enjoy it? Generally, well, I always go into this, uh, like when I take a vacation, I always go in there like I'm going to do like some stuff, you know, I'm going to bring some bands. I'm going to do maybe, uh, I never do anything. <laughs> <laughs> I always end up just like, uh, you know, drinking heavily and, <laughs> and just enjoying myself. Uh, cause you know, throughout the year and stuff, I, I don't really drink. I don't really, you know, do much. So I always end up just enjoying myself, but mm -hmm. you know, those bands don't, don't get any work. They just sit in my bag the whole time. But other than that, I, you know, I, we program the deloads in there, uh, right now through the app, you know, okay. and I always feel, I always feel much better when I just do an actual deload week, even if it's light and just, you know, getting some light movements in, I always feel better. Like the next week, like better recovered, like coming back from vacation it took me almost two weeks to kind of get back in the groove after doing you know nothing all week yeah I, I would much rather actually program a deload week doing light work than taking a week off mm -hmm. yeah I realized the same thing but sometimes it comes back to bite me uh like this last deload that I did I just I had my photo shoot I haven't posted that yet uh, I'm still waiting on some of the photos to come back from the yep. guy who processed them but uh, so I didn't want to lower my volume or my intensity too much. So I just tried doing something like a low stress week. So I removed like some of the movements and then I just dropped like a set here and there, but I added weight, but I dropped the reps a couple. So it was still heavy weight, but the RP was maybe around like a seven on average rather than an eight or a nine. Yeah. Right? With a little slightly bit of lower volume. So it ended up being still pretty brutal and I didn't really yeah. recover much at all. I feel like I'm already ready for another one, but. Uh, yeah, I hear you. Yeah, I always uh the way Juggernaut AI does it, it's like usually RP like five, maybe six, which okay. can be hard to which That's can what be hard I do to for my clients. Yeah, but yeah. sometimes I get a little crazy when I coach myself because yeah, <laughs> I've been thinking about getting a coach just to like it's like someone can hold me back, just keep you in check. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Because yeah. sometimes I just think I can do more than I than I can. But, yeah. In a lot of areas of life, honestly, I always try to like make the most out of every day. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. It can it can be tough. That's why self coaching can be can be hard. But yeah, I mean, you got that app to keep you in check. So, do you think it's worth it getting the Juggernaut AI? Like compared to like a, a actual coach, do you think it's about the same? Uh, is it about the same? I don't know because it depends how much guidance I think you need. You know, I think a newer lifter. Uh, would get a lot more out of like an actual coach, like going somebody like you. Or something. Mm -hmm. um, but if you're a little further along in your lifting, you know, career and more advanced, I think it would work just about as well. Um, wow. Okay. Like I said, as, as long as you know a little bit about, about programming, but like I said, it, it lays the framework out there, but you mm -hmm. just have to be uh, pretty good about uh, exercise selection and knowing what your weak points are, because it allows you to put in your weak areas. Oh, sure. Yeah, I'm pretty good at that, so I might have to give that a try. Yeah. Although yeah. I did plan out my next program already, so I kind of want to try that. I'm making a return to, um, I wouldn't call it conjugate, because I'm doing it a little differently, but um, concurrent programming. So I'm very excited to get back on like a rotating uh, max effort schedule. I'm going to approach yeah. the week work a little differently, so I'm going to do every minute on the minute, but and the last set of three, it's going to be a plus set. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm going to use a little bit of heavier tension uh, than traditional speed work. So I'm thinking maybe like 60, 65, 70, something like that. Maybe a little lighter, maybe a little heavier. I have to yeah. play around with it and go from there. Yeah, I like conjugate. It was a lot of fun. But I, that seems to be the biggest concern with, I think, uh, conjugate for people is the speed work. They say, oh, some people say it doesn't work. Some people yeah. say, oh necessary i'm not really sure i ran conjugate for a while i did the speed work um i felt like my work capacity was better when i was doing the speed work yeah i think it's you good know, to throw in here it. and there not What's all that? i think it's good to throw in here and there you know yeah. there's other ways of incorporating that secondary day to do different things so mm -hmm. like you can do like lighter speed work with bands heavier speed work with chains volume i've had a lot of success just doing intensity and volume yeah the way I'm approaching it now, I call it like, uh, I can't remember who said it. They call it like Speedwork 2.0. I think it was Freaky D. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if I remember correctly, maybe not, but 
yeah, he basically, you know, it's heavier percentages, raw, every minute on the minute, it's doing a plus set at the end. And like most weeks, I'll probably cap it around to eight, but towards the end of a meso cycle, I might push it to a nine or an all out uh, RP 10. I bought all these specialty bars and stuff for all the conjugate and stuff. And, you know, I don't use them quite as much now on, yeah. on Juggernaut AI, but uh, yeah. man, it's so fun. Yeah. Like, like oh, I, get, I get to do this this week, you know, and I get to try this one next week. So uh, I had a lot of fun on it. Though. Can you like edit the program that Juggernaut AI gives you so that you could say like swap out the squat variation for a different one or? You can swap out anything you want. Well, duh. Yeah. <laughs> In your notebook. I mean, yeah. yeah, you can. It's going to recommend certain things, like especially mm -hmm. the, the main exercise. But, you know, you can swap it out to whatever you want. Yeah. Well, like actually with the app thing. or like do you do that separately on something else that you track or does it let you do it within the app itself? You do it within the app. Yeah. Oh, nice. Sweet. <clears throat> so I, guess it out. I mean, you can add your own exercises in there if it's not in the database. You can create your own exercise, your own rep ranges that you like to do with that exercise and all that stuff. I've created a ton of different uh, exercises. And, uh, you know, just as long, you know, I mean, you would know, but just as long as you know what you're doing, you know, what muscle group it's hitting, it should, you know, work, you know, still. Now, as far as the way the AI programs the progression, like, does it separate the method of progression for the primary versus like, you know, the accessories or uh, how does the progression right. work? I mean, I think it's, it depends on how many days you're doing. Like it throws an extra, since I'm doing five days, it seems to throw like an extra like back day in there um, hmm. that, you know, I wasn't used to that. I think, you know, it's really beneficial. My back's been getting a lot bigger. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it seems to like say on a lower day, I'll do like my heavy deadlift and then we'll do a squat variation after that. It won't be the comp squat, but it'll be like some different squat variation. It'll be a little bit lighter. And then the other lower day, it'll be like, you know, the heavy squat with like some kind of deadlift variation the other day i did uh deadlifts mm -hmm. i think i'm we're doing fours on deadlift because i'm in the strength phase so we you know we're going to do four i think next week it'll be three and then kind of as i you know get closer to peaking it's going to get closer to one gotcha yeah basic but it works you know <laughs> you can't beat the fundamentals usually all right, welcome back. A uh, little technical difficulty with Zoom, but we're back at it to finish things up here. So uh, what was that last question again, Paul? Oh, I was going to ask you about the uh, the setup that you had in your the Rise Gym. You did a 45-degree uh, hyperextension, and you would kind of set up, I think, a barbell and uh, like maybe a pad or something. I just want to let you know that I kind of stole that idea and I got a uh, like the rogue hip thruster pad, and I kind of set it up on the safeties. Yeah, and I saw pretty your... much <laughs> it looks yeah, a lot. Pretty much do the same thing, and uh, but yeah, I got that idea from you, man. It's really working out for me. Mm -hmm. Like, do you weight it at all with like a barbell or like easy bar or anything like that? Oh, for the feet? Uh, no, like um, oh no, I know you have like a pad set up for your feet. I'm talking more so like um, loading the movement itself. Oh, yeah, yeah. I use a barbell. Yeah, you know, just load up the barbell, um, and then yeah, leg rollers down by the feet to kind of keep me in place. Looks comfy. I I just have like a towing strap set up on mine. It was a yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, you know, you had to tie a towing strap around the bottom of my my rack. Set the barbell up at hip height. Put a pillow there, uh, like an outdoor chair pillow, and yeah, another barbell in front, and got to work. Uh, yeah, get done. Really right. The range of motion wasn't the best. Now that I look back at it, I should have used shorter plates. Uh, once yeah. I started going back to the local YMCA and using like a legit 45 degree, I was like, holy crap, like the range of motion is a lot crazier on here. So I was like, yeah. like 235 at home and I had to cut back to about like 155 and build my way right. back up. I got up to, I think I got back to 225. Um, I was doing those right before I came back out to Cali. Uh, and yeah. the gym I go to out here, unfortunately, doesn't have a 45 degree. So I haven't been able to do any of those lately. Yeah, it, that's another thing that gets on my nerves about uh, gyms. When they don't have the equipment that you need, like, mm. you know, the 45 high or even like reverse hyper or a GHD. Like some of these commercial gyms in my area, they have like none of this stuff. They just got all the, the life fitness equipment and then, uh, you know, maybe a couple of power racks or something. But yeah. Yeah, I've been using that. That uh, I know what you mean about the the, the shorter plates. 
I think uh, I might have to stock up on some like 25s or something so I can get that that range of motion you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, like, say if you're in a strength phase or, you know, looking to uh, peak your deadlift soon, you can do dead stop reps from the ground. Um, yeah. If you have really small plates and, like, an easy bar, you can kind of, Absolutely. instead of letting your arms hang, you kind of just, like, hold it here so the bar never yeah. touches the floor. Uh, you can get constant tension on the posterior chain that way. So if you're yeah. trying to work more hypertrophy, you know, build up a muscular base, probably recommend that style. Yeah. They both get the job done for sure. Yeah. I was thinking about rigging some way on my, my rhino rack too. Maybe I can do something, uh, you know, do like a chest harness or something, or maybe do something through the, ca the cable or something. But, you know, sometimes I start messing with that stuff, trying to figure stuff out. And I, I end up in my gym for, you know, two hours. I even worked out. Yeah. Yet, so. You know, been there, done that. That's the one drawback of conjugate is some, some of the exercises took forever to set up. Yeah. Especially like if uh, you don't have band pegs, like the gym I go to now, they have band pegs. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to setting up the bands on them. And before I was looping it through a plate and uh, yeah. doing it that way, just, and you have to line the plate up. So that way the bands are equally pulling you back on both sides and everything. It was a little yeah. 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 Um, I actually had one more question for you uh, before we wrapped up. Okay. Um, I was wanting to know, like, I saw you doing some posing and stuff. Are you looking to enter like a bodybuilding contest or any kind of powerlifting contest or anything like that? Uh, so just to like, kind of give me motivation, I booked a photo shoot with my friend at the gym. Cause he's a professional photographer and he's looking yeah. to expand his portfolio. So he said he'd do it for free, but you know, I gave him some money just cause I appreciate him working with me and everything and, you know, hooking me up He took some great pictures. So should have those back and up any day now, honestly. So that, uh, from what I saw on his computer, they looked really good. Okay. Uh, so I booked that basically just as a mean to keep me means to keep me motivated through the end of my cut, give me something to work towards. And uh, basically the posing, you know, I do like bodybuilding. I don't like professional bodybuilding, but more so like natural bodybuilding uh, yeah. kind of thing that the noble natties are doing. Um, basically just trying to get as jacked as possible naturally. My main yeah. goal was to do a 700 pound deadlift naturally, but yeah. getting a jacked backside comes hand in hand with that. So. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I gotta get a hamstring curl. That's the one thing missing at the gym I go to right now. Uh, yeah. They don't have a hamstring curl, and I can see it in my physique. Like my GHR is weaker than ever, uh, just because I don't have access to a proper hamstring curl. Right now, I'm like setting them up with an ankle strap and the cable, and I'll sit on a box and do them single leg. Uh, right. Compared to an actual machine, it's it's night and day. Like <laughs> I gotta yeah. figure it out. At home, I have the GHG, and that you know that really hits them well too. But yeah, at the work gym, they have a seated hamstring curl, mm -hmm. and man, it's man, I just I've just been blasting them. It's the best. <laughs> I feel like I every push is the hand gym. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I still haven't been able to figure out a, a great way to do seated uh, hamstring curls at home. You got the isolator, and it's okay, but it's nothing compares to a actual machine dedicated to you know hamstring curls. So. At home, I just do them with a resistance band, just high rep band leg curls. Usually I'll either do them laying on the floor with the band hooked up to the pull-up bar. Or okay. sometimes if I wanted to do a seated one, I'll sit on the bench and loop it through the sidearm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Do you plan on uh, competing in the, uh, the garage gym competition? Have you ever heard of that? I've I've seen it around before. I didn't know how legit it was, but it's gone around for a few years now, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, there's no real rules to it. You just kind of submit your, your bench squat deadlift, uh, the week that, or a couple weeks that they're doing it. And, uh, you know, it's just a participation thing, you know, just something for the, the home gym community to do. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of fun. I'm going to, I kind of set my program to peak around that area because yeah. I don't, I don't, you know, compete or anything. So yeah. but it's nice to have something to work, work towards, like you said, some kind of motivation. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I usually do my mock meets, but that'd be a fun way to like do my mock meet and then like add a little community aspect to it. I think that'd be pretty cool. Unfortunately, I start my strength phase in a couple of weeks along with my bulk. It's probably going to be between 18 and 24 months before I'm towards my peak weight for my next uh, yeah. cycle. And that's where I plan on peaking my lifts too when, I, when I'm around that two, 210 to 215 body weight range. Okay. 
you know. Yeah, I think they do it in the fall and the spring every year. So okay, so yeah, maybe maybe next fall or like next spring, probably more so next spring, honestly. I yeah. need, need more time. My training is very long term. Like I don't know why these how these guys are competing three, four times a year. Like yeah. Yeah, I don't know how they do it either. Even me setting up this program to compete in this next uh, garage gym competition, like this, this felt like a little bit of a, a, a shorter cycle. I would have rather had a longer, more drawn out one. And this one's like, time to like build. a spring block and then a peaking block and then that's it. I'm like, damn. Last it's time good. I had like two or three uh, strength blocks and then like a couple uh, blocks of a peaking phase. So and the, the peak is so much better when you actually earn it through all that building. Yeah, yeah. So I might do that next time, but yeah, this one worked out to be a little bit shorter. So we'll see how it goes. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, man, this is gonna be a long file. So I guess I'll probably wrap it up here. I'll yeah. edit it, chop it in half, and we'll have the first half up on your channel, and I'll drop this half you guys are listening to now on my channel. Probably a few days after that. Cool. Thanks very much for your time tonight, Paul. It was nice chatting with you. Yeah, no problem, man. It was my pleasure. Mm -hmm. and take it easy and have a good one guys all right see you